Hi, I'm David. Uh, you're with In His Presence TV broadcast where all things are possible. My wife Joanna is not available today, but she sends her love to you. We have a very special broadcast today. I'm here with Dr. Daniel E. Bowler, known as the Prophetic Watchman. Welcome. Dr. Bowler, always uh, a pleasure to have you. You're 81 years young, still going strong for the Lord. You've had miracles, signs, and wonders in your life. You've been brought back from the brink of death on several occasions, actually, and people kind of like, it's done, it's over, and then God miraculously heals you, and he sends you back out with yeah. a greater anointing. He's done that, yes, he has. <laughs> I remember one time we were in the parking lot eating breakfast, and you'd had a heart problem at the time, and uh, we had come together. I just, we just felt like there was supposed to be some prayer. And I remember I laid my hand on you, and the power of God hit. And we both wobbled back, and the presence of God was so sweet, we both began to cry. And you got I into your car. That. We didn't even want to talk because we were both alone with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And God had Amen. done something miraculous in your heart at that moment. Yes. And uh, I, I've just seen him do so many things in you. And through you and through your wonderful wife, Shirley, who's been faithful by your side for years oh, and years. He's been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God. It was only a year and a half ago, uh, I had a, uh, uh, I had an AFib attack. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I in went, your heart. I went to the emergency room to show you how faithful God is. While I'm in the emergency room, they're checking out this AFib attack. My pacemaker decided to quit while you're there while i'm there now now this was from a previous five-way bypass yeah oh yeah that's the long time yeah ago. you've been yeah, this is just 20 a, years this, this is a year and a half ago and there i am and i had this afib attack I, uh, i'm s- sitting there and uh i mean just like this and my heart's run uh, is going so fast it's like i'm out running track and the doctor says your pacemaker just quit also you are being you a very fortunate man. And anyway, they run some tests and uh, got me, they got some, uh, I think beta blockers, got it leveled out and uh, got a hold of a, a cardiologist and, a, and another fellow about to get me another pacemaker. But then they found out that I had an artery from here all the way up into the side of my skull was 98% blocked. So you went in for something completely different God divinely appointed it so they would find the pacemaker stop and a 98% blockage so they could deal with yeah. that. Yeah. And then God restored well, what your Well, what it was, the doctor said you were so blocked up uh, with this plaque that it uh, you went into an AFib attack because your heart was mm-hmm. pumping so hard to get the blood through. Mm-hmm. But while I was there, something that nobody ever even dreamed, the pacemaker just went totally out. Now, hadn't they, they they canceled that pacemaker and didn't update things? Oh, oh, yeah. They got me a brand new one, and they put me a new one in. But they operated on my throat and cleaned this out, which is a very dangerous operation. Yeah. And uh, it was just wonderful. I was out in about two days, and uh, my energy came back. I had to be careful to they heal because they grafted mm-hmm. things. And so God just, it's just wonderful, miraculous things like that he's done to And me from before. then, God sent you out yet again to preach. Yeah, then uh, after I got through that, and I uh, then held a series of meetings over on the East Coast. Lots of healing miracles yeah, take God place just there. A lot of things. But let me, uh, uh, this section here, uh, David, I, I believe that we discussed it a moment ago. It's a very serious, serious uh uh, uh, program at this time because I need to warn this nation. Folks, you're looking at someone that's had to warn nations that are doing what we are doing and wouldn't stop. I warned the nation in Central America of this human trafficking and I warned them of their slavery, the, uh, uh, of human trafficking all over that nation. And uh, it was awesome. I said, if you don't stop, I said, and repent and turn, God is going to judge this nation. And it's going to be horrible. You've got to, you've got to stop this. Well, uh, that nation of, uh, of, uh, of Central America did not want to listen to anybody. And the churches wouldn't rise up and try to uh, pray and fight it like they should. 
but they were also involved in uh, in uh, uh, just destroying their people with uh, un, unheard of uh, laws that nobody could keep and putting them in bondage and uh, uh, and they were they would it was a terrible situation. Well, to make a long story short, I had to prophesy to that nation. Now, I want to read you something because I, I've got to talk to this nation. I'm a part of many great prayer groups, and there's thousands of people praying. And God is having mercy on us right now. But if we don't keep this going and we don't build this wall of prayer, I'm going to tell you, folks, God has showed me unequivocally in about three years, there's a, uh, at the, in 2021, there's a judgment coming that is going to be more than people that I know are going to be able to come through. I'm talking about Christians. Now listen to me. I'm going to read you something, Psalms 106 uh, in, in verse 8. It says, Nevertheless, God saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power known. God saved us for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power known. And some people are not interested in that whatsoever. And friends, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you need to listen to what I'm about to say here. Now watch this. Verse 9, he rebuked the Red Sea also, and it dried up, so he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. He saved them from the hand who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Folks, listen to me. God brought us through one of the most horrible wars that we have ever known in the Second World War. My family members was in there. He brought us through a terrible where millions of people died. At times we were losing 10,000 men a week. He brought us through that, and our nation survived. He has brought us through so many things over here, but yet this slave trafficking, just like the country of Central America that I was in, that I prophesied, I said, if you don't stop it, you're going to pay a great price in your nation and in your families, and a lot of people are going to be hurt. God wants to deliver you from destruction, but if we don't turn this thing around and stop it, folks, I cannot tell you what I'm seeing in the, uh, in the spirit. And it says here in the verse, the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his words and they sang his praise. Friends, I don't want the water to cover uh, many, many parts of this nation like the water covered New Orleans who would not stop. And I warned them of their internal drug trafficking, their slave trafficking, their, uh, their hiding out of the worst criminals in the world will be uh, hid out in that city. And the Mardi Gras where they just make God like he's nothing and build the devil up. I warned them and I told them, you got to repent. I tried to get the churches to pray. They wouldn't pray. Well, what I'm trying to say is this nation, to some extent, has started praying. But God showed me that unless our nation is willing to county by county, city by city, state by state, government hall by government hall, listen to me. If we don't repent and get on our face before God and pray with everything that is within us and then put legs on our prayers and tell our congressmen, we're not going to put up with this anymore. We're not going to have this happening in uh, where uh, the, the abortions and, and, uh, are being funded by our government and we're allowing this stuff to go on and tra slave trafficking is going on, which is going on in the abortion clinics in this nation. Friends, let me tell you, this is a serious hour. Our nation promotes and pushes out more pornography across the world than anybody. Our nation is one of the greatest consumers of drugs of any nation in the world. Our nation is in deep trouble with God. We don't want God. We just play games with God. Folks, listen to me. God showed me that there would be more cities like New Orleans, you hear me now, and other places, and 9-11s that would begin to repeat in greater, in greater, a great, I don't know the word, magnitude. greater magnitude starting at the end of 2021. I saw in the spirit as God was talking to me that we got three years 
of a type of prosperity. A type. It'll look like it's pretty decent, but it's really being held together by the skin of our teeth, by the many thousands that are praying. I have an app on my telephone, on my uh, cell phone from Dutch Sheets, and every day I'm praying with that team of prayer warriors. I take his prayer books. I've studied his prayer books. I have them all. I recommend them to you. And if Dutch Sheets is listening to this, Dutch, bless your heart. I thank God for what you're doing. But folks, listen to me. We have come to the place that we're willing to take the course of least resistance instead of becoming the people of God that we're supposed to come. But now we got our backs to the wall and we really don't know it. In 2021, somewhere in there, maybe towards the end or in the middle, cataclysmic events beyond anything we have ever known is going to start in a greater rapidity and a greater acceleration than it has ever been. Now, friend, let me tell you something. My wife and I had to, by the command of God, go to Tampa, Florida. We drove down there. I had to rent a motel, and I had to get the pastors to go and say, listen, there's a massive hurricane coming straight at you. You got to get on your knees and pray. I was only able to get a few on their knees. We prayed that night. I had no idea that one, while I was there preaching and teaching those people to pray and how to build a wall of prayer, that a, a, that a magnitude three hurricane was coming straight at Tampa, Florida. My wife and I were there. It had already went over 100 miles an hour, and it was coming. I had no idea. They evacuated Tampa, Florida. This is just a few years back. And uh, over 500,000 people left the city. I'm in my room praying, God, why can't I leave? He would not let me leave. I called the pastor and those that that had been praying with me said, God won't let us leave. I said, stay on your knees. Don't get up. And I want you to know I was sitting there uh, with a map of Florida there with my hand over Tampa. And then I look over at the television and uh, it said, you, it's, uh, it's coming straight at Tampa. It's 14 minutes away. And then they say 13 minutes away. And all of a sudden, as I looked at that, uh, at that, uh, map, I saw a hand about, uh, it, it, it was a huge hand, just went, I assumed it must have been the hand of an angel that did that, God's most powerful angel. And we got a word on television, the hurricane just turned into, uh, I think it's Pinalata or something like that, I cannot remember the time. Pina Gorda or whatever, Florida, and it literally Maybe wiped. Maybe it was Punta Gorda. I don't know. I believe it was. Wiped that little town out. Friends, I was there warning them ahead of time, and here I was on my face. I went on to run revivals up in Alabama and different places like that. But folks, recently back, I don't think it was a couple of three years ago, guess what? That thing came back. And when it came back to Tampa that time, it ripped that place apart. Destruction was awesome. Now, I've had to face stuff like this, just like I had to face the thing in New Orleans. I've, I've seen this. I've had to call pastors and tell them. Pastor Koziki up in Michigan, one day I was out in the yard, and the Spirit of God just came to me. He said, call him and tell him. There's a massive tornado coming right where he lives up there in the Montague and White Hall. And tell him to get the people on their knees quick. And I did. And he got his people together. He knew, he knew the track record of what God had been using me for years and years and years. I want you to know that thing came. It didn't harm his church or his home. Matter of fact, it didn't harm any of his family. Just a few shingles. The city was ripped to shreds all around them. But guess what God got out of that? God had to have somebody to help clean up that, those two small towns. One was about 3,000 to 5,000 people. The other one about 2,000. Uh, Mr. Koziki uh, has a logging company. He got the job. He hired people that needed jobs, and they made enough money to pay off the whole church debt. Can you say amen? And That's that, what happened out of that. And that became a ministry center. Oh, yeah. It became a big ministry center, and it's still to this day. And they I've, give away thousands oh, and thousands of dollars worth oh, of food to oh, the all the time they, they, meet the needs they have a humanitarian people. operation uh, something like ours we'll talk about it sometime but folks listen to me i've had to do this all over this country city after city after city now i'm selling you this 
you got to understand our nation must come to grips that sin has to be judged. We reap what we sow. The scripture tells us that be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever a man, whatever a country sows, therefore they shall reap it. Our country is holding on by our thread. That angel of God that appeared in the rotunda last year when Brother Dutch Sheets and thousands of people were up there praying and said, cry mercy. Now, friend, listen to me. We explained to you on a previous show that mercy before judgment is God's pattern in the New Testament. We went into great detail. Get on your knees. Start a prayer group. Hook up with praying people. Uh, on the, uh, go to the net uh, to uh, Whole Life uh, Ministries uh, in Augusta, Georgia. Go to their wholelife.com. But you go to that section and sign up to get onto that prayer group. Those are praying people down there. Hundreds of them are praying. And, 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 and spread the word. Folks, listen to me. This is, from the, this is from the Spirit of God. When 2021 comes, that'll be right at election time. God has shown me that cataclysmic events will be beyond anything we have ever known. Now, he hadn't given me the exact cities uh, uh, like he did in bygone days. I don't know that he will. I just know that uh, my life and my, my very being is, uh, is, uh, is caught up in uh, keeping our, our home for children going in Central America and helping others in Haiti and in Romania and in Africa. And uh, we are very, very much involved in that type of humanitarian outreach. But you see, this nation, this nation has got a group of people in it that does not want it to stand for Jesus Christ. They are persecuting Christians all over, the, over this nation. They are persecution, persecuting ministries on the worldwide net. They are coming against different people in different walks of life. Uh, many of our synagogues are being raided and the windows busted out every night where our Jewish people go. We've got problems that don't, you don't hear about in the news. We have, we have degradation and a deep state of people in government don't want this nation to stand for God and country, don't want it to stand for the Constitution of the United States that made our nation strong. But we can pray and we can change things. But we got to stay in there. We got to understand that we can all say, God, I want that anointing that Daniel had. And go to praying. And Daniel prayed before his God until the angel of God showed up and said, I'm doing warfare, Daniel. Are you hearing me? Because of your prayers. We need that. And God will do it if we will pray. And we ask God to have mercy on it and forgive this nation of its sins. And go to praying and get and do your best to get God-fearing politicians to run for office and get behind them and help them. Friends, we are in a very, very dangerous place. And God showed me unequivocally for three years more, we'll have a type of prosperity. But in 2021, look out, the whole thing is going to change. He said everything would be about as usual. Debt, inflation, something happening here, something happening there, shooting there, this going on, that going on, just like you see all the time. But then all of a sudden, it's going to go off of the end of the scale. And I pray that God's people will be ready. You must prepare your, your, your very family to understand this that they must pray and build that wall of prayer and protection around their homes, around their lives. Out where we live, we've seen tornadoes come through. Matter of fact, one come through last year. My wife and I stood with our hands in the air and we spoke to that thing. We prayed, we pleaded the blood of Jesus. We sung the 91st Psalm that said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God dwelleth under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, man, no harm will come nigh my dwelling. Friend, we prayed it, and it went around us. It took the tops off our houses only a few hundred yards up the street. Barns went up in the air. Trees were flying through the air like missiles. And we only had a few trees down. That was all that happened. And I praise God tonight that he 
has been so faithful. He is faithful. You become faithful today. Make up your mind that you're not going to be lackadaisical. You're not going to take the course of least resistance anymore. You go join a prayer group. Go get in there and learn how to pray and do warfare for this great nation. David, come on. What you got, brother? I love it. I, this is what comes to me. A good boxer, a champion boxer that can knock somebody out in one round. They never, <laughs> they never train for one round. Right. They always train for 15 rounds. And if you train for 15 rounds and you knock out your opponent in one, you're in good shape. But if they get beyond the first round, and you got to fight them in the second, and the third, <laughs> and the fourth, and you get around that 13th oh. or 14th or 15th round, you better train for 15 rounds. And this is where I believe God's given us yes. a mercy time. That if we'll get in and start to train, we'll knock out our opponent, the yes. enemy, of our souls in the first round. Yes. But if we don't train and we've got to go 15 rounds, we could get knocked out ourselves. Yes. Peter did not train for 15 rounds. Right. Jesus says, pray that you don't enter into temptation. Yes. The word pray there is in the present imperative tense. It's the word pray and continue to pray with a continual praying. And then you won't enter into temptation. So we don't pray, oh Lord, I pray I don't enter into temptation. That's just religious words. Yeah. Yeah. Relationship <laughs> causes us to have a spirit of prayer, an attitude right. of prayer. And if you don't have a heart yet for a prayer, ask the Lord to give you a spirit of prayer, a heart of prayer. And what will happen is he'll start to pour it into you. I don't get up every morning and have a desire to pray, but I'll say this, Lord, give me a heart of prayer. And something will come on the inside of me and it will begin. That's right. And I'll have to fight off sleep. Right. I'll have to fight off lethargy. And the next thing you know, I've just started and I rise with the right. power of God. Prayer is not something that we do in our flesh. It's mm. something that comes up on the inside of us when we ask him to fill us. That's and right. if we'll train in prayer for 15 rounds, we'll be able to knock our opponent, cast out devils, heal the sick, see the prophecies come forth and come to pass. We'll have the mind of Christ. We'll not be falling into temptation. Mm. We won't fight temptation because the one on the inside of us has arisen and we walk into the situation, we become atmosphere changers instead of those that are weak and we allow the atmosphere to change us. If you walk into the room and you're a thermostat, it's a good thing because you can take the temperature or a thermometer, you can take the temperature. But if you're a thermostat, you'll change the temperature. Dan has been a temperature changer like a thermostat all his life now, let me tell because you, he's a man of prayer. Let me tell you something. I have saved prophecies from prophets. I have a book this thick. I mean, all the way back into the 1800s. I've got them all the way through the 30s and the 40s. In the 40s, it was prophesied to England. It was prophesied to England, repent and turn to God. Uh, as you know, England turned against the Jewish people. All of Europe turned against the Jewish people. And the scripture says, you touch not the apple of my eye. But they did it anyway. Blessing Israel, I will bless you. That's what it says. Cursing said. Israel, I but will curse he you. Warned Genesis 12, them 12, to 12, repent 3. of their sins. England and that nation brought the gospel to us. Most mm. people don't know that. They were warned. They did not heed. And they were destroyed. England, uh, London was bombed night and day and into oblivion. It was terrible what happened to those nations over here. I'm leading up to something. Honduras. Guatemala, Central America, and all of them were warned about all of this that I've been talking to you about. And I told them and that there was, a, there was a typhoon coming. There is something coming greater than anything I've ever seen. And destruction is going to be massive if you don't get on your knees and you don't come to God and repent. And I'm begging the churches. I went down there, brother. Well, I want you to know, in less than... Two years. God gave him that space of mercy oh, yeah. to repent. Less than two years, the most massive typhoon and typhoon. hurricane came through, swept through the country of Honduras. It was 50 miles wide, destroyed the total infrastructure of that nation. 25,000 people died. Oh, 25,000 people died in less than 36 hours. Now, friends, listen, I've seen this with my own eyes. Now, hear me out on this. This nation had been warned about World War II. I've got the prophecies of the prophets that said they're coming. Please pray. 
America just went on and they just clapped their heads and sung songs while Jews were being cooked in ovens and our nation knew all about it. And they just went on clapping their hands and singing songs. We only had about 95 million people back then. 15 million of them ended up in war. We are fighting for our lives for we were invaded also. As many of you know, we lost over 3,500 people in one big raid when Japan invaded us. Listen, friends, all of that was prophesied. Prophets galore have prophesied it, that our nation will be into a massive invasion of great wars if we don't come to grips with the very thing that I'm talking about. But God always gives a warning to draw people to oh, repent yes. oh, yes. so we can avert disaster. You're not prophesying this to come. You're prophesying so we get a heart of prayer so we can yes, avoid. that's exactly God right. has no pleasure in the death no, of the wicked, but rather no, the no. wicked repent. Romans no. 2, 4, it is the goodness of God that leads men that's to repentance. That's exactly right. So, so you're sharing with us, so it's time to get on our knees. We're, we're running out of time. I'm with Daniel E. Bowler, Dr. Daniel Bowler, uh, also known by many around the world as the prophetic watchman for years. You went into 47 cities in 1997 in 47 days and prophesied miracles would come and they would mock you to scorn then it would come to pass and it was to get people to repent and repent is not a bad word it's a good word repent means re to return to the pent the penthouse the highest place and if you'll simply turn from where you're at to god you'll return to the highest place with him instantly pray with me lord jesus come into my heart Make me new. I turn from my old ways. I turn to you. I return to the highest place with you. Wash me and cleanse me in your shed blood. I believe you died on a cross 2,000 years ago. I believe you were hung up for my hangups. I got plenty. Now, come into my heart. Make me born again. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you just said that prayer from your heart, you just got born again or you got returned back to the highest place with God, Write us at Virtual Church Media, info at Virtual Church Media. Visit us at virtualchurchtv.com. Email us and we'll send you some free materials electronically to get you strengthened in God. God bless you. Amen.